Good question, Chris. Okay, Chris says, please address the current cyclic changes in hiring and layoffs. What are the strategies as we sit in August 24? Uh, if we can't get in on cat season in, in 24, and how can we find work as we compile our credentials? Thank you. So basically, the hiring is it's not so much the hiring layoffs. Um, the, the industry is basically considered to be a temp. IA firms are kind of t technically considered to be temp agencies. So it's, it's more like you get a, uh, deployed for an assignment, and when the assignment's done, then you're done, right? And then you just wait for the next one. So it's not so much that there's layoffs or hiring. Um, the storm season is going to be where the most work is for people starting out, right? Um, if you're uh, if, if you get through storm season and you haven't been deployed, you haven't had any work, the best strategy, and really any, even if you're in storm season, the, like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, um, the best strategy is to get as many licenses as possible, get Xactimate level two certified. Um, it's important. Um, I'm going to tell you fast track is a pretty critical piece um, because then when in the, the downtime, there's still plenty of work. Right? There's, there's daily work. There are small cats here and there. Um, you're in a much better position. Remote work, you've got to have to, – to, to, to be a remote desk adjuster, you, you need even more licenses than, than a field adjuster does. Um, that's, those are going to be the, the keys to um, – you know, if, if, you can't, if, you, if we're skunked on the, the hurricane season, not that I'm wishing for destruction or, you know, despair, or, you know, tragedy or whatever, but if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We're there to help. Um, if it doesn't happen, then still need to work on that stuff because you can still, you can still get deployed and you can still get work um, with lots and lots of licenses um, and lots of, and lots of good quality training. You need insurance as an adjuster, including E and O. Learn what you need for free at cplic.net slash adjuster tv angela says i've had my license since 2020 and never utilized it or know where or how to begin well um <laughs> hopefully angela this answers some questions about that um if you are brand new to this and you're like i don't even know if i want to be an adjuster or not i'm going to send you to go to adjuster tv.com slash start this is explains how to get started right oh, you don't know how to start don't even know where to begin well that's where you go adjustertv.com slash start. How to start. How to overcome the fear, Alex says. Well, I think that anxiety is, you know, we, we, maybe we don't call it fear because I, I don't think it quite rises to the level of, you know, to, you're running up the stairs, you turn off the lights in the basement, and you're up the stairs really fast because you feel like somebody's right behind you kind of thing. Maybe that's not fear either, but it's, it's definitely anxiety, right? The first step the thing that, that always cured anxiety for me and still does today is to take action in some way, right? Pick up the phone, make the call, right? The, the tags on the truck are about to expire. Just carve out the morning next Thursday and just go do it, right? Taking action almost always causes anxiety to evaporate. So You've taken a lot of action, right? You got certifications, your MoCat trained, which is awesome. They're, it's an absolutely outstanding outfit. Got a Texas license in Florida. The next step, if you haven't done it, Alex, is to get a lot more licenses. I'm going to tell you to get everything from Texas all the way around Florida and up to North Carolina, okay, for this hurricane season. It's going to be a bad one. They say licenses, licenses, licenses it makes you more, more and more and more deployable. And don't wait to apply to the firms, right? Even if, you, even if you're not like Alex and you have nothing, you have no certifications, you have no licenses, you don't have FTD, you didn't go to MoCat, you haven't done anything, you need to apply at these firms now because when, they, when the hurricane is bearing down on the coast, you, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to onboard and fill out an application in your employment history and get a drug screen and do this and do that and blah, 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 when they're trying to send you to work, okay? So important. Do that stuff right now. And I think you'll find that some companies, in spite of going to MoCat or taking FTD, they're, they're still going to have 
um, some compliance stuff for you to do. Like Pilot will, will absolutely want you to go through their assessment training. It's a five or a 10 day, right? And it's, they call it a training. It's really an assessment to see what you know, right? And if you show up not knowing anything, then you get at the bottom of the list either way, right? You want to show up to those things having some knowledge. Um, but you want to get those things knocked out before the, 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 the storm hits. So take action, Alex. Whatever you got to do. This video is sponsored by Haig Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HaigEducation.com. Dylan, is there somewhere I can learn, watch real life claims with damage we'll be seeing during hurricane seasons like trees on the house, scoping, estimating damage? There's a lot of those videos that are in Adjuster TV Plus and in uh, FTD. Um, writing up reports, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> photo reports, you might think that that's a really easy thing and you might hear on social media that, um, it takes forever and you have to take 500 photos for everything. I have a totally different view on that and a very, very streamlined way to save lots and lots of time doing photos. So I would say Dylan FTD or at the minimum, get yourself uh, a membership at adjustertvplus.com. Hoffs, is there an age at which you think it's too late to start this type of work? I don't think that there's an age, but there is a physical fitness level that, um, you know, is kind of the limiting factor. If you're, if you're wanting to make, you know, 80, 100, $120,000 a year, there may be um, other ways to do it, especially if you're not, if you're not able to quickly and efficiently look at four or five three, four, five, six houses a day climbing roofs in the field. Um, oftentimes, um, there's a lot of competition for remote work. So like I just, the, 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 um, the advice I was giving to Alex, uh, or sorry, Chris, um, same deal. Those licenses are going to make a big difference. If you've got lots and lots and lots of licenses, it's going to have a significant impact on, on, how much you can work um, and getting you started, right? Getting started is the hard part. You know, once you, the, the learning curve is really steep, but the it plateaus, right? Um, but no, I don't think there's an age and you're not going to get anybody. As long as you can demonstrate that you can still climb a roof and, and handle, pull a ladder off the top of your truck and set it up on a house, you could be 75 years old. I know, I know of known adjusters who were in their early seventies who were fit, skied in the wintertime, rode bikes in the summertime, and were adjusters, and they did just fine. Dylan says, uh, different examples of damage to houses understand how to write up the claim. Placing rafters, mitigation, wrapping plastic, painting room inside, um, all that stuff. How do we learn those details? That is in fast track. I don't, I'm not gonna make every answer fast track, um, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I built this train the way I did. So, Summer, good question. Will companies drop you? If you are not closing enough claims by week two, not necessarily. Um, if you, and, and I would say this, if you're closing any claims, you're going to be just fine. Okay. If you're not closing any claims at all and you get into to the end of week two and you're pushing into week three, right? And you're halfway through week three, you're making, you, you're probably going to get a call depending on how busy the storm is and how many adjusters each manager has you're probably going to start getting phone calls or email like, Hey, what's your pen? You know, I'm, I'm showing your pending is this, have you done any inspections yet? Um, I don't, you have, you don't have any closed, or you don't have any closed claims yet. Um, what can we do to help you out? Do we need to take some claims away from you? Right. They're going to give you, there's going to be a couple of like, um, pressure release things there before they, they just absolutely just cut you from the storm. Right. You have to show that you're, you got to be closing some claims, right? And honestly, if you can close three claims a week for your first two weeks, that's going to be better than 80% of the other new adjusters that are, that are your competition. So you're going to be fine. So don't, your, your objective is to ramp up as quickly as you can, as reasonably as you can, right? Using that calendar that we had up there, follow that program and, and, and you, you'll be just fine. Um, Alex, I kind of talked about this a minute ago. Uh, thoughts on attending a pilot five day in person training session or similar. Absolutely. You have to do it. If you want to work, if you want to get on the roster, no matter what other training you've had, 
um, even if you're certified by me, Pilot still wants you to do that. And like I said, it, it's an, it's probably more assessment than training. There's training in there, absolutely. But if they see that you don't, you showed up with not knowing anything, that's they're going to assess that they want to put you at the bottom of the, ro the, the the bench roster. Reserve, they call it the reserve roster. The ready roster is what you want to be on. Uh, Pam, can you talk about using drones for roofs? So my stance on drones is that the carriers, um, part of my stance is, is dictated by the fact that the um, some of the major carriers, uh, State Farm being the prime one, um, disallow drones. They even State Farm even canceled their drone program because it just caused too much headaches for them. Um, that said, I think it's a valuable tool like rope and harness or fall protection gear that you can buy, like the, a goat or rope and harness or a hip lock or whatever. Um, it's something that if you are, especially if you go to New England and you have these 400 year old houses that are, you know, it's 40 feet or 35 feet to the, the gutter, right? And there's, you could get, get a, a long ladder or meet a contractor out there, but then you get up on the roof and it's 12, 12 and it's made out of slate. Do not walk on that. It's, 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 if it's got a tree laying across the top of it, I think that a drone's great for that, that kind of thing, right? If you're doing like just in the suburbs and it's a bunch of little 412 ranches and they're all composition shingles, you're gonna you're wasting time dragging a drone out and trying to scope with with a drone on those. Because you can just you can be on and off the roof with your ladder in less time than it takes to set the drone up and get it, take your photos or whatever. And if you're doing hail, Right. If you happen to get on a hailstorm, uh, which if you do this for long enough, you absolutely will. Um, the drone can't touch the roof. Right. It can't. F f hail damage is a feel thing as much as anything else. Um, so get one. Uh, if you think that you're going to be and you don't have to get an expensive one, you can just get one that takes pictures. Um, if there's going to be inaccessible roofs are extremely dangerous roofs. a roof that has an eight foot diameter had an eight foot diameter tree laying across it is probably compromised and it's going to be dangerous for you to watch a walk on it um so do you probably want to use the drone on that just so that you can see the extent of the scratches and the holes and the whatever that's on the roof and if it's damaged that bad you're probably going to be replacing all the rafters anyway um, Sam says, Hey, Matt, thanks for hosting this. I'm working day claims while I wait to be deployed. How do I know if I'm doing a good job or not? My firm knows I knew and, um, all of them have been super nice to me. I don't want to jeopardize my relationship with them. I appreciate your time. So if they have a file review process where they're kicking files back to you for corrections and stuff, which hopefully they are, um, then that should give you an idea if you're if they if you're not getting very many files kicked back if it's occasionally like hey you got the wrong price list or you got you know it's a couple of simple things you're probably doing fine the best thing that you can do is i don't know how many claims you've done but you know if you after you've been running claims with them for a couple of weeks or three weeks um call your manager and say hey listen you know i just wanted to make sure that i was doing everything the way you guys wanted me to and anything I could do to improve my files, I just want to get some feedback from you. And just ask them, just call them and ask, right? And this is an anxiety thing that is, is alleviated by picking up the phone. Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.